What's going on everybody? Kalipas Tech here, coming back at you with another video. In this video, we're going to be comparing the Motorola Moto G 5G to the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G. Now before we go any further, I do want to remind you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you want to learn more about either of these phones individually, I will be linking to several other videos about them in the description, as well as some information about pricing and availability. But with that being said, Let's get into it. So with the Moto G 5G, we're getting a 6.5 inch 90Hz IPS LCD display with a resolution of 720p, a PPI of 270, an aspect ratio of 20 by 9, and an 81.4% screen to body ratio. With the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G, we're getting a 6.4 inch 90Hz Super AMOLED display with a resolution of 1080p, a PPI of 411, an aspect ratio of 20 by 9, and an 83.7% screen to body ratio. So both of these phones do have pretty good displays, but the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G does have a huge advantage here. While the size is pretty similar, and in fact, the Moto G 5G is actually a tenth of an inch bigger, the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G with a Super AMOLED display and a 1080p resolution is going to get a much higher quality image in general. With a higher resolution, everything is going to be a little bit sharper, and with a Super AMOLED display, the colors are going to look a lot better, and the display in general is going to be a lot brighter. In addition to this, the viewing angles with the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G are going to be a lot better. So if you're outside in the sun, for example, the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G is going to be a lot easier to see than the Moto G 5G. Now for storage, the Moto G 5G is getting 256 gigabytes of internal storage with microSD card expansion, and the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G is getting 128 gigabytes with microSD card expansion as well. Now keep in mind with the A33 5G, there is another variant of this phone that has 256 gigabytes. So while in the case of this comparison, the Moto G 5G does have an advantage, keep in mind that it's not really that big of an advantage, because if you want the A33 5G but you want more storage, you can simply just get the 256 gigabyte variant instead. In addition to this, this Moto G 5G in my hand is the factory unlocked version. I'm not exactly sure what carriers are doing but I'm guessing that carriers are going to offer it with a little bit less. But again, for the purpose of this comparison, this Moto G 5G in my hand is the factory unlocked version with 256 gigabytes, and this Samsung Galaxy A33 5G in this video does have 128. And honestly, in general, for the average user, you're probably going to be perfectly fine with either. And even from my own personal experience, I would say I'm pretty much an average user. I don't have an insane amount of stuff on my phone, but I do use it quite a bit. And I personally have an iPhone 13 with 128 gigabytes, and of course, iPhone don't have micro SD card expansion, and I haven't had any storage issues myself. So really, again, for the average user, you're probably not going to need any more than 128 gigabytes anyway, but I know there are plenty of people out there who use a lot more space than I do, and if you are more of a power user, if you have a lot of apps and photos and videos and stuff like that, while there is a fair amount of stuff you can offload to a micro SD card, if you really do need a lot of space, having 256 gigabytes of internal storage is always nice. Now for security features, both of these phones do have fingerprint scanners. With the Moto G 5G, it's right here on the power key, definitely a nice convenient spot for it. And with the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G, it's right here in the display which I think looks a lot nicer and more premium. But regardless, I really do like the placement of both fingerprint scanners. So as far as that goes, you're really not going to go wrong with either of them. And in addition to this, both phones also have face unlock as well. But that being said, starting with the Moto G 5G, let's go ahead and give these fingerprint scanners a try and see how well they work. There we go, one more time. And there we go. Moving on to the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G, There we go, one more time. And there we go. So as you can see, both fingerprint scanners are real fast and responsive, no issues whatsoever. And again, remember, both phones also have face unlock, so if you want to use that instead, you always can. Now taking a look at the camera setups here, with the Moto G 5G, we got a nice looking hole punch design for the front facing camera, and this camera is 13 megapixels. With the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G, we got a water drop notch for the front facing camera. This water drop notch kind of looks like a water drop notch that wants to be a hole punch. I don't really know what they're doing here. But regardless, this camera is 13 megapixels as well. Then on the back, with the Moto G 5G, we got a triple camera set up here with a 50 megapixel main camera, a 2 megapixel macro camera, and a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera. With the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G, we got a quad camera set up with a 48 megapixel main camera, an 8 megapixel ultra wide camera, a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera, and a 5 megapixel macro camera. For video, the Moto G 5G has a max recording quality of 1080p in both the rear and front cameras, and the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G has a max recording quality of 4K in both the rear and front. So in terms of both features and quality, 
While the Moto G 5G isn't really bad for what it is, the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G is going to be significantly better. Not only are we getting an ultra wide camera here, but this phone can also record 4K videos. Whereas again, the Moto G 5G doesn't have an ultra wide camera and it can only record in 1080p. In addition to this, even with just the regular photos, in general, the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G is just going to take better pictures. Especially with the macro camera, I found the macro camera on this phone to be phenomenal. So if you really want to get close up detailed images, or you're just taking a lot of pictures in general, the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G between the two is going to be the best choice here. But on the other hand, if you're more of a casual camera user and you're not really taking a lot of photos, but maybe you want a couple nice Instagram photos here and there, the Moto G 5G, while not being as good as the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G, is still going to get the job done. Now as far as RAM and processor go, with the Moto G 5G, we're getting 6GB of RAM with the MediaTek Dimensity 700 processor. With the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G, we're getting 6GB of RAM as well with the Samsung Exynos 1280. Now I ran Geekbench 5 benchmark tests on both of these phones. And with the Moto G 5G, we're getting a single core score of 545 and a multi-core score of 1684. And with the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G, we're getting a single core score of 740 and a multi-core score of 1847. So as you can see here between the two, the performance with the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G is going to be significantly better. So if you're doing higher end activities like mobile gaming, for example, or you're just going to be on your phone a lot, I would say the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G will give you a noticeably better experience. But on the other hand, if you're not going to be using your phone really that heavily, or you're just going to be doing more basic activities like web browsing and social media and stuff like that, the Moto G 5G is still not a bad option and it's definitely fast enough to get the job done. Now for the battery, both of these phones do have 5000 mAh batteries, so for longevity and life per charge, you can expect both of these phones batteries to perform really well. In fact, for that matter, I've had the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G sitting on this table for like 6 hours and it's still at 97%, so that really just goes to show this phone does have really good battery life and with the Moto G 5G it's the same kind of thing. So if battery life and longevity is important to you, you're really not going to go wrong with either of these phones. But that being said, one difference here is that with the Moto G 5G, this phone supports 10 watt fast charging and the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G supports 25 watt fast charging. Now that might not sound like a huge deal, and in some cases it's really not. If you leave your phone plugged in all day for example, then you're obviously not going to see a difference at all. Or maybe you don't have a very powerful charger, in that case again you're really not going to notice a difference. But if you have a good fast charger, namely 25 watts or higher, you will notice a difference, and the Samsung Galaxy A33 35G will charge up faster, but otherwise, if you don't care about fast charging, in that case, for all intents and purposes, the overall battery performance for these phones is going to be about the same. Another thing to keep in mind is that with the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G, we are getting NFC, whereas we're not with the Moto G 5G. So if you like to make contactless mobile payments using Tap and Pay, then you might want to consider going with the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G, because between the two, this is the only phone that can actually do that. But of course, if you don't care about NFC, then this difference is not going to matter at all. Now, another thing I do want to point out that you've probably already noticed by now is that with the Moto G 5G, keep in mind this is not the Moto G Stylus 5G, there is no stylus here. That phone is a completely different phone, which I have covered a lot on the channel as well. But that being said, one thing the Moto G 5G has that the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G doesn't is a 3.5mm headphone jack. So as you can see here, the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G doesn't actually have a headphone jack, whereas the Moto G 5G actually does. So if you do want a phone with a headphone jack, definitely keep this in mind. But in conclusion, which of these phones is better? In general, in almost every way, I would say the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G is the better device here. Despite the displays being pretty much the same size and dimensions, and having the same refresh rate, the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G not only has a 1080p resolution versus only 720p, giving it a sharper and more crisp image, but it also has better display technology, which is going to give it better brightness, better colors, and much better viewing angles. So again, if you're outside in the sun a lot, or even just anywhere, the A33 5G is going to be a lot easier to see than the Moto G 5G. G. In fact, for that matter, I can tell you from experience, if you're outside in really bright sunlight wearing sunglasses, the Moto G 5G is almost impossible to see from some angles, whereas with the A33 5G, you're really not going to have any issues no matter where you are. Now, of course, you can see here from just my weather alone that I might be a little biased when it comes to that, but if you are in that situation where you are going to be in the sun a lot, then definitely keep this in mind because when you can't see your phone without taking off your sunglasses, it does get really annoying. Aside from the display, the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G also has a much better camera setup that has an ultra-wide camera, records 4K videos, and just takes better pictures.
pictures in general. It also supports better fast charging, has NFC, and a faster processor with better performance. But that being said, while the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G is a much better device, the Moto G 5G really is not a bad phone either, and it does have a decent camera, a great amount of storage, a really large battery, and the processor is not bad either. That being said, another thing to keep in mind here is the price. With the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G, honestly, I've been seeing some really good deals on this phone, whereas with the Moto G 5G, if you get this phone unlocked directly from Motorola, it's going to be around $350, I think. Whereas with the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G, I've seen this thing for like $270 something dollars on eBay. So in that case, if you can get the A33 5G for less than the Moto G 5G, I really don't see any reason to get the Moto G 5G at all. But that being said, I'm not exactly sure what carriers are doing. And if they do have some kind of deal where you can get the Moto G 5G for free, then in that situation, you're really not going to go wrong with it. Now that being said, if you do want to learn more about pricing and availability, I will be linking to both of these phones in the description because this kind of thing is always changing and by the time you're watching this video, it could be completely different. But this concludes my comparison between the Motorola Moto G 5G and the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G. Again, if you want to learn more about either of these phones individually, I will be linking to several other videos about them in the description. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalipa's Tech on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I will see you in the next video.